On this episode, we put a brain in our head. A brain goes in the head, right? That's how it works. And then we enter that brain. Enter brain. And then it just works. It just works. What can I say? <laughs> Hi everybody, this is Christian from LazyDiffs Academy. Welcome to Advanced Schmatt Tutorial. Brain surgery is something that we're gonna do today. So we have created a little system, a tiny little system, just two commands that allows us to program our uh, enemies. And on today's show, on today's episode, we are going to try to create a, create a more comfortable editor to kind of start programming this in, in this editor, start editing those different behaviors in the editor and then expand our um, our set of um, of commands that we have in our little programming language right so let, let's 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 load brain edit and see what what's up all right uh, off the bat uh, we only have three commands in this first brain like we only have three commands and it's already it's already scrolling to to decide so we probably want to choose a very very different layout for our actual brains and also we see two brains like brain number one and brain number two we see both of those brains on the same screen and we probably don't want to edit multiple brains at the same time we just want to always see one brain at a time so i'm proposing when designing the layout for the brain editor um i think a good idea is to do something similar to the way we do the sprite edit just like to remind you how that looks like so in sprite that we have a lot of sprites since we have like this list but i don't think we just even need that in the, in the brain editor i think brain editor could look something like this where you can like switch to different brains right like this and then then you can kind of like add the commands in here under any you know you have like a list of commands that scrolls down like can get can get longer than a screen or something and then here in the center of the screen we might actually show a preview of what it looks like when those commands are being executed but that's maybe for the next episode for now let's do the layout i kind of like already already want to maybe add the meta file because there's for sure, there's going to be some meta information about the brains. <sighs> Whatever. Let's just, just let's let's just like do the layout first. Um, as before, like before, I want to create a new mode, a brand new mode. That's going to be draw. Hmm. Let's just call it brain mode. Why not draw brain, and then update brain. Brain, and then down here is we gonna do uh, no in the, uh, no oh it doesn't have we don't have a uh, UI tab let's create a UI tab yeah because it's, we just freshly created this from the uh, from the template that we created there uh, so where is the refresh ah oh, there we go that was in a draw tab um, there's refresh table I'm gonna cut this out I'm gonna put it in the UI. Um, but we're not so much interested in a refresh table. Uh, I'm gonna create a fun. Oh, I accidentally turned on the uh, hiragana. Uh, control J. There we go. Whew. Okay, <laughs> had to look this up. Um, function refresh uh, brain. Okay. Yeah. At the beginning of the update brain, we're gonna refresh brain and then here where we're starting i'm going to start with a draw brain and a update update brain um i also want to create a variable called cell brain as uh, the selected brain so we always know which brain we're editing at any given time technically that could be considered cur y but let's be just like explicit about this um so cell brain equals one all right, so let us uh, start designing the menu, right? So in many ways, it's gonna be kind of, it's gonna be kind of similar to um, the, I think, to the layout we had previously in, um, in again, in the, in the sprite editor. So we have this menu, we're gonna create a new line. That's why we're gonna have like an 
object inside a curly bracket, so object inside a, an array that an array of one. <laughs> Because again, this is like this X and Y coordinate systems that we have. Each line is a new array. And so when we just have multiple things under each other, then each uh, button will be embedded in its own little array. So it indicates that we are in the next line. Uh, this, the lines are really just like um, important for like the cursor navigation, but that's a big deal. Um, right, so the text, uh, first of all, let me just like do something like brain one. Something like this. This is going to be the text. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Um, why did I count this? <laughs> I can just do it like this. This is not necessarily important right now. Now we're going to think about this later. Um, this is going to be the head. Uh, <laughs> the brain goes in the head, right? That's how it works. Um, and then the x and y position is going to be two and two. Um, also, something that we are not doing, we want to also draw the table, which is not something that we're doing right now, but we maybe we should. Uh, all this stuff, we're gonna we're gonna cut out. I'm gonna go function draw menu. Plop. And then here we're gonna go draw menu. And then here, draw menu. Also, I want to do a CLS um, to indicate that it is different from this. We're going to do a different background. Let's go uh, 13. And we're done, <laughs> basically. I mean, we haven't begun yet. Okay, so we now see the brain. Um, then I want to add, I'm going to add a new a menu item, which um, I will explain later on. I, I think that it's, it's a good idea. I'm going to call this setup. And maybe you can do like a special character in here. Oh, there we go. Let's go, which, which one character is this? This is P. Uh, Shift P gives you, gives you like this thing. Or maybe we could even do like this setup. Like the hamburger menu, ah, you know what? I, I like my 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 diamond. So the a diamond is, is supposed to indicate that um, this is um, this is this opens up a new menu. Something like this, um, and CMD is going to be set up. Uh, we're going to put it down plus six, right? It's five height, no plus seven. Let's try that. There's our setup. It should be plus eight. I want to have like a little gap there. Okay, that's good. That's good. Um, why is it red? Oh, because we have set it up so that, that the, the colors are always red. Okay, good. So let me reset it to 13. 13. 13. Okay. Good. So now I want to print the brain, the actual brain. Um, so for that, we're going to do something like, let's go local my, my brain, my bra, <laughs> let's go, let's go, let's go with my bra, I, I like it. Um, brains, square brackets, cell brain, right? That's, that's what we always want to do. We always want to, uh, draw the selected brains and then we're going to go, um, for I. Now this is where we have to think about this. Equals one, two, uh, the number of brains, um, number of my bra, how many entries we have in my bra, but we kind of, we kind of want to probably do it every three steps. Let's, let's, let's try, try this like this and Mm -hmm. And then we're going to create a, a local variable called LNE. That's going to be a new line that we're adding. That's going to be empty for now. And then we're going to go to add LNE. We're going to add something to that line. And we're going to add menu 
and then an e at the end after the, the loop. Every time we go through the loop, we're gonna, at the end, we're gonna add that line to the menu. And so now we're adding like individual buttons now to the, to the line that we're describing. So this is gonna be like the command and two parameters. We want to add these now. Let me start with the commands first, and then we're gonna try the, the, the parameters. Um, so basically we're taking all this stuff here So the text is gonna be my bra. I. Yep. Um, the width is gonna be, this is the command, right? So we're gonna go like this. Uh, we're gonna call this edit. We have set up an edit, that's, that's different. Mm -hmm. uh, X is gonna be stay the same. Um, we probably should have like a running variable that indicates which, what the position is of the next line that we're drawing. So let's do something like L, uh, local LX equals, LX equals uh, 13, no, 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 uh, 10. That's, that was here, right? Uh, plus eight, so 18. Because we have um, drawn the last uh, button, we drawn it at coordinates um, 10, that's two plus eight. And, and we know that we're skipping eight pixels to leave a gap between the buttons. So that's why uh, the next button should be printed at uh, line 18. And then at the end of the line, we're gonna go LX plus equals, um, now not no longer eight, because I don't wanna actually gaps between the individual lines. I think it could be nice if we do now a, uh, Let's go with six, but we could probably should uh, seven, but we should could probably go down as low as six. Uh, let's try seven. How that looks like. Um, all right. So text is good. Edit is good. X uh, Y should be now on L X on the height L X. C is good, but I also want to add here like a CMD I the index that we're that we, that this button is should edit is gonna be I. Uh, and then CMD brain, CMD B, and that's gonna be cell brain. Again, not necessarily to add save to save the cell brain in the buttons because if the, if the buttons are on the screen, then they refer to the currently selected brain. We're gonna keep this around. It's, it's, I think it's, it's, it's good to be prudent here. Um, right. So this should just create one button per line now. There we go. That's the three commands that we have in our first brain. We have, we set the heading, we wait, and then we set the heading again. I have an idea of, of I, have, I, have, hmm, I have an idea. So let me set this to three, three. I, I want to do a bit of a change here. Um, you will see in a second or later on why. Uh, let me move things a little bit further in. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's maybe a little better. Although maybe up, ah, whatever. Okay, now let's uh, create the buttons for the parameters. Um, so we always know that it's going to be always two parameters. So there's, we can just do it manually. We could loop it. Um, you know what? Let's let's loop it after all. I, I, I whatever. So we're going to do a local variable uh, called l. By the way, this is lx. This should be ly. Just realized this should be ly. LX should be LY because now I want to actually have LX and that is going to be um, three plus whatever the width is of our button. I'm not sure what the width is. It's like 314. Let's try 14. And then we're going to go four four. J equals one, two, two, do. So it's going to be a very short loop. Um, but this, like this, adding a button is just like so such such a huge amount of code. That I think it might might pay off. Um, right. So something like here. Um, so we're adding a new button. This time the we're gonna take the text from my bra i dot j. Wait, I put it in the wrong. That's not a not a for next loop. This is the for next loop. Uh, okay, J, um, and then we put it on the LX position, and then we're gonna go LX. Um, 
here, I think it's very important. Yeah, it's probably quite important that we <clears throat> set the length of, like we, that the length of the button is kind of variable. So depending on how long the, the number is inside those different parameters, the button will scale automatically to the width of the number. Um, I think we have to be a bit more flexible with the buttons here, but for now, let us leave it at three and then we're going to think about about things later, how we're going to make them a bit flexible. Um, Lx plus equals, let's go away again with 14. Um, now this is also edit, uh, but um, the thing that we're editing here is i plus j. Mm, cell brain, everything else is good. Let's run this. Bam! It just works. What can I say? <laughs> Now, um, there is a bit of a problem. Uh, you, I don't think you see that, right? Oh no, we, we just, there might be no problem here, but I think in the next brain there's a problem because there's negative numbers and I don't think we have enough space for the negative number and then we, have, we get some problems. But yeah, no, this is good. Let me finish up this like first broad um, layout by adding one last element. That's, that's quite important. Uh, so I'm gonna add this. So at the end, when we are done drawing the brain, I want to also add a command that will, <clears throat> will basically say plus. That will just be like, oh, no, wait. That will add a new command, new line to the brain. New line. Um, we don't need an I here. We do need the B. 3LYC. Yeah, that should be that should be good. Let's try that. Oh wait, wait, wait. Uh, we're adding this to the menu, not to any kind of line variable. Uh, this is not what. Oh yeah, because I added it to space. Um, also, I want to maybe add one. To, oh, let's let's let's. You can just do it like this. Plus one. Right, because I want to have a, there a, a gap. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's the that's an excellent excellent layout for our our UI. And now the question is, or the task for us is to be able to navigate this stuff to make this come to life. All right. So first step, I just want to be able to move with my cursors through here. Right. So let us go an update function. And let me just take all this. Stuff. I mean, this is this is a lot. We're just gonna take all this stuff and put them in here, and, and then we're gonna prune. They're gonna prune this a little bit. Uh, first of all, I don't need to be scrolling with my scroll wheel through the stuff. It's it's not gonna be that much entries. Uh, I don't want to be looping through. Um, just um, yeah, just something like this is enough. Uh, this is some exceptions that I do not care about, um, but I do want to uh, do like this, cur x, cur x. So this basically what this does is it restricts the cursor. So I cannot move the cursor um, outside of the table that I have on the screen. This is gonna be a very conventional type of menu right now. Right, and then here is I'm, again, I'm, there's scrolling. I'm not sure, oh, there might be scrolling. Um, I'm not going to care about this right now. Uh, scrolling is something that if we ever going to have a brain that, that requires scrolling, we want to bring back the scrolling. Now here's the actual interaction. Um, I'm just going to make it empty for now. This is interaction with the buttons. Um, we're not using any mouse and I don't, don't think this editor will require a mouse. Okay, let's try that. Okay, this totally works. All right, next step is I want to I want to tweak the layout a little bit. I want to make the buttons actually a resize um, depending on the number that is inside each button. Uh, we don't really need that on the on the commands, but we do need that on the on the, the individual texts. All right, so here and when we generate the menu for the brain, um, this is where we're actually getting the putting the uh, creating the parameters buttons. And so let me do like something like local. Um, my txt, my text, uh, I'm gonna put the 
true string. I'm gonna uh, take the data that we're about to draw and we're gonna change it into a string. I'm gonna put that string in here. Do we have space jam here? We don't have the space jam function. Let me get the space jam function. Let's get space jam, copy. I'm pasting it in here in our tools for the brain edit. So that's a little function that it will generate a string of a certain length. And now when we go back to the UI, uh, here where we, this is like the width, this is the background that we're drawing. And when you start typing stuff in, this will show a black box behind it. So now we can put in the uh, space jam in here and that's gonna be the length, hashtag my TXT. Like something like, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's correct. Um, this is, I just realized this has to have a bracket here. Otherwise, we're good. Okay, this is cool. Uh, now the buttons are, the spacing is not quite correct. Uh, let me see. So um, it's not as fixed spacing anymore. It's going to be based on the length of the text of the previous button. So it's going to be something like my TXT multiplied by four plus one. Let's try that. Yep. Um, now they're a bit like the numbers run into each other. If you don't see where one number ends and one another one begins. So let's go plus two. Yeah, that's better. Uh, I'm, hmm, I do not like how, what happens if the spacing between the lines are, is a bit closer maybe even? Does that help? Hmm. I'm not sure about the readability of all this. Um, let's put it back to, maybe what, what happens if we do eight? Hmm, now it's quite, I mean, now, now I feel like the separation between the lines is more clearer. Yeah, let's keep this around. Let's, let's, let's make it eight then. And then we can remove the plus one here. Okay, this is good. Cool, okay, so let us now, um, one thing I want to do now is I want to be flipping between different brains. So let's add this functionality. Um, so here, an update brain function, um, <clears throat> we're gonna go if cur y equals one, then so if we have the top, the top uh, line selected, then we do something, otherwise we do this. Mm -hmm. And then the thing that we do when we have the top row is selected is we're gonna make, we're gonna advance or re reduce cell brain. Like this, like this, we did that before many times and we now want to make sure that the cell brain stays within the range of, of uh, of our existing brains. So something like uh, cell brain equals mid one cell brain hashtag brains, something like this. Or actually it could be data. Um, let's go data. Totally works. This is the second brain. And now you can see that also the, the box for this minus um, 0 0.1 has, increased in size. Now it has four spaces to accommodate this bigger number. That's what we wanted. Um, I want to update this uh, top line here so to reflect the different brains. So here in the UI, when we generate the caption for that line, I am going to do something like this, dot, 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 um, cell brain. Does that even work? Yeah, so now one, two, one, two. There is no leading zero there, but I don't think that's a, that's a, that's a huge problem at this point. Okay, so we can different select different brains. We can navigate through this stuff. So now there's just two things I want to be adding, to, to two major things. One is I want to be edit, editing the individual lines here. So yeah, here, edit. And um, yeah, let's execute all this stuff. So, ooh, ooh, ooh. so if um, doing edit, Else, if let's let's add all of, all of actually let's actually already add all of the different buttons that we already created, so we don't have to go back every time. Um, so what are the different buttons we have? Edit, edit a new line is another button that we have, and setup I guess as well. Okay, so go, go new line setup. Okay. Uh, let's go edit. So edit is we entering edit, edit mode where we can change the text in the individual uh, cells. And we already have the code for that. It's, it's the same code as here, right? 
So we're just gonna uh, we're just gonna put it in there, and that should be it. Now, when we press Enter, a different thing should happen. So um, we have to do that uh, that change here. So this was like this callback function, right? So um, yeah, here when we press Enter, like there's all this stuff happening that 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 happens when you do Enter. But actually, what should happen is there should be like a callback. Um, we had that in other every time we that this this basic editor we have to rewrite this code from scratch. So I'm not sure if I'm going to rewrite the same way. Maybe it is going to be subtle changes. Let's see. Um, but yeah, I'm going to create a function called enter um, underscore uh, table. And that will get executed when you press enter in table mode, and then we're going to have also a a uh, thing called enter brain. <laughs> enter brain. Um, and that is going to be here. Yeah, we can. Okay, we definitely always want to poke this, so that's good. Um, and then we, we can go call back. Like this. Um. Yeah, let's 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 do it like the oh, oh, what wait there's more stuff in here. What is this stuff? Jeez. Okay, let's let's get all this stuff out then. Yeah, this this stuff. This stuff is gonna be the enter table. A lot of things we're, do we're doing a lot of things when we press enter in a table now um, we want to set the callback to enter table when we edit in table mode so this is update table this is this is like the old excel style of stuff and then we're going to set the callback variable to enter table we just want don't want to break the excel <laughs> we don't want to break the excel mode of our game uh, right and then when we are in our brain mode, in our new brain mode, this is here, then uh, the callback should be not enter table, but enter brain, like this. Mm -hmm. Let's save this. Before we start writing enter brain, I just want to make sure that the table is not broken. Um, I'm, I'm a bit worried. So let's, let's go back to table. Uh, there's a problem here. Oh, else if, if, okay, got it, got it, got it, no problem. Right, so can we change the text here? Hep, yep, heg, okay, that works. Tagging stuff in the table mode works, now let's make sure it also works in the brain mode. I'm setting back to brain mode, and then I wanna actually create the enter brain function. So first of all, when we return, we're going to return to brain. That's a very important aspect of it. Um, we do want to get the menu for sure. Um, that's okay. This is okay stuff. Now, if it's empty, then we're going to have to think about things. We, we have to going to have to have a big think. We, that's going to be meaning deleting stuff, uh, and that's going to be that's going to be big brain stuff. But otherwise, um, yeah, CMD X and CMD Y, that's not quite correct. Um, let us adapt the new. So what we're doing is CMD I and CMD B. So CMD I, yeah, CMD I and CMD B, okay. So um, data, well, so when we are in the brain mode, the data we are editing is actually CMD B, the brain, and then CMDI. We are storing the uh, indexes of the of the data that we're editing. We're storing in slightly differently named variables. Uh, maybe we didn't have to rename them, but I think whatever. It's, it's, it will be fine. We'll be fine. Uh, this should be it. We just cannot delete stuff yet at this point, but but uh, we're gonna get there. Okay. So let's see if we can set it to HEP. Yes. We can set it to H. Yes. We can set it to Eight, yes, we can set it to nine, yes. Okay, we can edit stuff. Right, so let me do some small changes. Um, let me let me do a to-do list actually, because now right now I have some lots of ideas in my head. So to do. 
uh, we don't need that to do. Um, sanitize CMD in Put. So I, I, if I write in a command that is a wrong command, we want to sanitize this. Sanitize um, numbers, delete, delete lines. Uh, also add lines. So these are the, the, the four things I want to, I want to be doing. Um, this is not high priority. But deleting lines and adding lines certainly is a priority. So let, let's let's uh, take a look at this. So if type val, if we haven't typed in nothing, right? If we ha we have typed in nothing, then we're gonna check if we are actually currently editing um, the first entry. If in, uh, my menu same di equals one, then else. So the idea is that if I type in nothing. If I just type in an empty space as a command, I want to delete that entire line. Um, so, oh, but actually that's not what is happening, right? Um, that's, okay, that's CMD I is gonna be one for the first command, but it's gonna be four for the second command because you know, every third entry is a command entry, right? So we have to do like a modulo here, right? So if um, CMDI minus one modulo three equals equals zero, I, th I think this is the way we do this. Okay. Or actually, we can also do CMDI modulo three equals one. Uh, you can do that. It's, it's no, no problem. So every, if every third entry, you know, let me let me try this. Um, Yes, <laughs> we're gonna do something like this. We're gonna set it to yes if if we hit the correct one, and we're gonna set it to no if we set to uh, 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 we have the wrong one. Let's try that. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. Okay, so this works. This totally works. Good. So in <laughs> if this is a command line, then this means that we actually have to delete this entire thing. So we're gonna go del i mm, from the brain. Um, index number cmd y, i. And the thing is when you um, delete an index, then the rest of the string kind of like moves in to fill that gap. So we can execute, if we want to delete three subsequent entries, we can actually just execute the same command three times. We could put it in the loop, but <laughs> whatever. Um, so this should delete three entries. Let's see if this works. All right, so let's... It worked, but now... Ah! And then we should also return. Hmm. Let's set this first. And then this allows us to return before we, because here we set the value. Let's try that. Totally worked. Totally worked. Um, just to clarify, so <laughs> we deleted the entries but then we proceeded executing the, the next code and the next code was setting, changing the contents of, of an, an, an array entry and that content was zero. So it deleted the three entries, but also it set the next entry that was remaining, um, it set that to nothing. So uh, we want to re do return here. So that part doesn't get executed. What happens if, our, uh, if we are editing something else, a value? In this case, maybe I want to set my value to zero. And actually, probably what I want to be doing is I want to do this test first. And if I tap in nothing, uh, yeah, yeah. So this is editing command entry and then else editing uh, data or parameters. 
Okay, so if we're editing the command entry and we're trying to do zero in there, then we're gonna delete that. Otherwise, we're just gonna put what was inside. And then here is where we're deleting the parameters. And again, if we're trying to put in something that is nothing, first of all, Uh, we're gonna because we're assuming that the entries are like the parameters that we're putting in are always numbers. Maybe they won't be numbers at some point, but let's for now let's assume that they are always numbers. So um, to num we're gonna uh, type val will be changed to num, and if type val equals nil, if if, then, if we're trying to put something that is not a number, then we're gonna change that to zero. Okay, and then we're writing the type file. And then we're gonna change it back maybe to an, um, an, a string, right? Type file equals to string type. We didn't do that before, but uh, the problem is like with Lua strings and numbers are kind of like interchangeable, so uh, whatever. I'm gonna save this. Um, right, so let's put in nothing, deletes it. Uh, let's put just head. That that's okay. Head is okay also. Now let's put in here nothing. It resets to zero. Let's put it to two. It's two. Let's put it to minus one. It's minus one. Let's put it minus one point five six. One point minus one point five six. Okay. Maybe I I, I pressed the wrong button. Okay. So yeah, you can totally edit those values now. That's good. Finally, let us let us add let us add an entry. That's something that we haven't done yet. New line. Um, we're just gonna go add data. Now, are we going to add cell brain, or I'm gonna take that? We're gonna take it. We're gonna. Oh, we are not saving the brain in here. Let's let's save the brain in here. Oh wait, 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 that's the wrong one. Here, this is wrong. Yeah, we do have the cell brain select saved in the button. So let's take the brain that we're editing in from the button. Um, so it's it's like um my menu uh, dot cmdb. We're getting the brain from the from the menu. And to that brain we're adding a new entry. Wait, we are adding three new entries to that brain, right? Yeah, we're adding three new entries to that brain. Okay, so the first entry is gonna be um we're just gonna do a wait entry. Was it wait? I think it was wait. Mm, and then uh, we're gonna add zero zero. So wait zero will basically do nothing, and so that's okay to add that to to the code as a, like a default line. I'm gonna save this. Yep. Oh. All right, so far so good. So we can create uh, new entries, we can delete entries. Um, there is one more thing missing, we cannot create new brains. That's something that we still have to do. But for now, let us move on to the doggy zone. Right, the doggy zone. So <clears throat> we are deleting lines, we're adding new lines, that's good. Something that we still need to do, and that's gonna be one of the tasks for the, for the doggy zone. It's kind of simple task, but still you have to do it. Um, uh, creating new brains. Uh, we, so we have to do create uh, new brains. We have to sanitize the numbers maybe. We actually already sanitizing the numbers. So that, that part is already gone. So we can only put numbers in the parameters. Um, we are not sanitizing CMD input, which means we can, currently we can put in commands that are unknown. Um, that's something that we might want to fix. So that's the second thing. Creating new brains first thing making sure that we can only command, uh, write in commands that we can write in. That's the second step. And then the third step, the third step is getting into, you know, the nitty gritty of the brain editor, because right now it's just like all the slightly different menu to stuff that we, or slightly different UI to stuff that we were able to do before already with our Excel default, right? Um, now what I want to do, and that's going to be the third task is get a, an enemy in there and make the enemy execute the command that you are like the commands that you're currently editing so you can see the changes as you're editing now this is going to be the long-term goal but for now i just want to see maybe like an enemy there how about that just like draw an enemy on the screen another goal for the doggy zone 
Yes, yes, yes. And also at the end of each episode, I want to give a big shout out and a huge thank you to all of you who are supporting this show on coffee.com. Coffee.com slash lazydevs is the address if you want to support this show as well. And I have some questions to read out. Uh, this one is from Squidlight um, and he asked, have you ever been blown away by a game someone created during uh, using your tutorials? What's the most rewarding experience to remember? Oh man, there's just so many. I just, can't. it's just impossible to single one out. It's like, you know, picking your favorite child. It's just like, I'm, I'm always blown away and always, really happy when I see people creating beautiful stuff um, based on my tutorials. And it's kind of hard to tell what is more exciting. If it's it's exciting if you see somebody who is like getting into programming, got into programming and making games because of my tutorials, if they're able to create like some kind of very basic thing is like, yes, I did this, you know, that's, that's really fun to see even if the game is not really exciting. Just seeing the enthusiasm that people have develop as they go through tutorials and they, as they see that they can be capable in this space. That's really fun. But of course, it's also fun to see somebody who's more experienced, who follows the tutorial, and then who surpasses the tutorial or creates something that is, you know, just incredible that I am surprised by. Um, like we saw, for example, recently with um, Louis Chapman's beautiful shmup. Yeah, that was all, that was incredible to see recently, and it was really fun to see. I also have to see sometimes something comes out of left field that makes me go like, what? what? Um, I was uh, I, I was really surprised by somebody recreating pork like for the Game Boy. That was I didn't expect this was ever to happen. I didn't expect pork like to be ever on the on an actual Game Boy. Uh, that was that was also really really cool. No, I I really I I can these are just some examples, but I really cannot pick which is my favorite one. Just like things that pop into my head when I think about this. Yes. So we are creating a tool for brain surgery. So far we have the surgery and we have the brain, but we don't see the results. So that's something that we're gonna talk about on the next episode. See you next time around guys, bye bye.